There we go. Hi, Promise Live. How are you? Yes, we are here for Revive. And again, I am just so excited to see all of your beautiful faces. Um, we just want to tap in on today um, regarding a prayer. Um, it is a common thing in our Christian walk, um, but I really think that we need to understand it in order to have the victory that we know we need to have. Um, and so, with that being said, we are going to dive into the 12 strategies of prayer. This is very important. There's a reason why we need to look at these 12. We're not going to talk about all 12 of them um, on this particular live. We're going to focus on um, one in particular, but as you're coming in, just make sure you let me know where you're coming from, uh, drop your state, all of those good things, and we're going to move forward in Jesus name. Um, I miss you guys so much. Um, it is just an honor to to serve you and to have you guys here. Um, and so, hi ladies, how are you? Alrighty, so we were having a little bit of technical difficulties. That's how I always know it's going to be an amazing live. Hi, Minister Lorraine, I love you so much. You're such an amazing blessing um, to me and to Promise Life. So uh, ladies, go ahead and let your friends know. Uh, today we're coming from San Martino. Yes, awesome. So yes, ladies, as you're logging on, let me know. Drop your city, drop your stay. Hi, Kim. Um, yes, Alyssa. Um, so ladies, yes, let's get ready. You don't understand how excited I am um, because anytime God brings um, a, a teaching, um, um, and I feel the teaching anointing today, um, that's because he wants to unlock some truths. He wants to unlock some mysteries to us. And with that being said, um, that means that we're getting ready to tap into an area that we need all the twos in order to thrive. Hi, Tamika, how are you? So yes, so let me know where you're coming from. Um, we'll have more ladies uh, join in, but I just want to talk to you today because this is going to be amazing. We have the 12 strategies of, um, of intercession and of prayer. We're not going to talk about all 12. This is going to be our new series. Today, we're going to focus on two strategies, and this is something that every um, believer, um, I know that we list, hey, from Houston, all right, um, you, you need all the tools, and we're going to equip you. So you want to set your alarm for every Thursday because what we're going to be doing, we're going to lay out these 12 strategies, and when I tell you these 12 strategies of prayer, ladies are going to help you ladies and gentlemen are going to help you unlock um, realms of a manifestation of blessings I mean you're going to see demonic forces um, 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 beat down you're going to see things um, you know just really um, take off in your life it is something about um, an answered prayer that just changes a life right um, so yes I saw someone put in the comments just yes, grab your pens your papers um, take notes you don't want to just um, absorb this information and not have it um, to be able to look back on and then also we'll be posting these on our YouTube channel so if you don't hi cousin from Mount Bayou Mississippi woo woo my mommy hometown um, and so uh, make sure that you take notes on this because again, when a prayer is answered, it unlocks something. It unlocks your level of faith. Um, it unlocks your level of boldness and confidence. Um, and then you can take that scripture that says we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Like it's literally like now you feel like a cape has been put on you. You have um, unearthed or emerged in a new superpower, if you will. And so you don't want to, uh, oops, excuse me. You don't want to not take notes, okay? Um, on this and then I'm going to be talking to you about the book that you can get hi sister um, that you can get that's um, that this study is going to be coming from that's going to help further you because I know that we've heard the term prayer warrior before I know we've all heard that term um, it's something that the church has created um, there's not necessarily anything in the Bible that says prayer warrior um, but it is you know a phrase just to highlight some 
excuse me, someone who um, is able to get a prayer through. Well, here is a news uh, or a public service announcement to you. You are all called to be prayer warriors. There's no specific set group. Um, there's no um, older senior mother in the church that's able to get in touch with God more than you are able to actually, um, you know, bombard heaven and get an answer from God. God is very clear about it. He says that in his word that if you call, he will answer. Um, there's no specific uh, hierarchy um, in the sense of God loves when his children talk to him. God loves when his children pray. So all of you are called to be prayer warriors. That doesn't mean length of prayer. That doesn't mean time of prayer because I know uh, people who spend lots and lots of time, hours in prayer, but their prayers are not effective. Um, so for me, I would say uh, you're not too good of a warrior. Um, because I want prayers that are effective. I want prayers that move mountains. I want prayers that transform lives. I want trans. Um, I want prayers that can uh, shake every principality. Those are the things that I'm talking about when I'm saying prayer warrior. I'm talking about actual manifestation of what you prayed for happening here in the earth, not in a length of prayer. Now, uh, just as a caveat or uh, just as a disclaimer, those who love to pray do, do spend lots of time in. In prayer. Yes, Temple, Texas. I see you, Betty. Welcome. And so uh, we're going to dive into this study um, and we're going to be talking about, again, the 12 uh, strategies or prayer type, 12 types of prayer that are going to help scale a uh, level up in prayer. Uh, we talk about level up in business, level up in our money game, level up in so many areas, but we don't talk about how to level up in prayer. So if you're ready, I want you to give me the praying hand emoji in the comments. Or if you don't know where that is or you can't find it on your phone, I want you to go ahead and put um, prayed up, prayed up, prayed up, because we're getting ready to unlock this. The first scripture um, we're going to go to, let me get to my notes here, is going to be Matthew 18, Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 through 20. And again, these are going to be familiar passages, ladies. But what you want to make sure is that you're not just reading to be reading. This is what's going to make you so different. I love, uh, we've been getting testimonies. Um, you ladies in the promised life are just ready to, uh, you guys are in beast mode in the spirit. If I could, I don't for lack of a better term, right? You are in beast mode in the spirit. I see some of you, you guys are grabbing your concordance. You guys are asking questions. You guys are saying you're, you're in the word more. You're searching out the scriptures more. That is a testament to your faith. That means discipleship is happening. That means you're now equipping your spirit. So when it's time to fight, when it's time to claim your blessing, when it is time to declare over your family, you now have the tools to do it because as you can see, um, our new normal is that we have to be able to tap into Holy Spirit without being plugged into a actual edifice, a actual house. Um, and yes, things are opening back up slowly, but they're not at full capacity. So you need the tools to be able to say, hey, I don't have time to call a prayer warrior. Um, I need to lay hands on the sick right now. I need to pray for my body right now. I need to pray about the situation right now. I can't wait to a specific day or time or place. So if this is you, you're in the right place. If you know someone who is always asking for prayer, this is another reason why I decided to do this teaching because Holy Spirit said, if the ladies are asking for prayer, that must mean that there's lack there. That must mean that there's something that they need and they feel inadequate, that their prayers are not reaching me, that they don't, um, that they're not a prayer warrior. They're not classified or strong enough in the spirit to be able to command and shift the atmosphere. But I am here to tell uh, you that the enemy is a liar. You have with in you, Holy Spirit within you, which is the power of God, which is the uh, voice of God, which is the knower of all things. And he through you can pray and shake mountains. So you in fact are a prayer warrior. You are one that can war in prayer. You're one who can fight in prayer, decree blessings in prayer and all of that. So I'm hoping that that has just dis dispelled all what, um, yes, please share. 
Yes, please share. Yes, this is open. Um, only thing that I try not to go into sharing are the prophetic um, trainings uh, because if they haven't taken all the modules, um, somebody put in the comments, is it okay with sharing? Yes, please share and tag. Um, but for the prophetic trainings, I try not to because if they come in in one training, it just won't make sense. We build. So that's that. So let's go to Matthew 18 verses 19 through 20. It says, and again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered together in my name. I am there in the midst of them. Now, this, again, is a very familiar passage. However, again, you know, with the promised life, we never take the scripture for surface. There's hidden mysteries. The Bible even talks about hidden mysteries that only the Holy Spirit can reveal. This is why an atheist can um, read the Bible and say, oh, there's nothing to it. Well, that's because they don't have the Holy Spirit to give them the mysteries or the hidden truths that lie within the words. OK, so we're going to look at that word agree. It says, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything. So let's start right there. The word agree. It's very important because I know that you are probably like me where you thought the word agree means that we just, you know, you saying yes to what I want for prayer. And I'm saying yes to what you want for prayer. And we're praying about the same thing. Um, that's not necessarily true. The word there. So let's do, let's do word study. I love word study. You want to interpret the Bible? Word study is going to be your, your first step to um, unpacking the scriptures. That word there um, is the Greek word symphonios. Symphonios. It is where we get our word symphony. That word agreed there in the Greek is translated, um, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right. I'm not a Greek uh, scholar in the sense of pronouncing these words. Um, um, some phano, some phano, there we go. That is what the Greek word there means, agreed. So it means sophano. That is where we, in our English language, get the word symphony. Okay, symphony. So in order for us to better understand it, it says, again, I say unto you that if two of you um, come together like a symphony. Now, this is very important because in order to explain this, let's go ahead and take that word symphony and describe prayer or coming to God as that, because this is what the word is telling us. If any of two of you come together and agree or come together like a symphony, okay, or in harmony, we know symphony has to do with music. And I know lots of you love music on here. Um, you're music lovers like I am. Um, and there's one thing uh, I know about music is that it just takes one person or one instrument not to be in tune or one person not to be in tune. Their notes are flat or off and it will throw the whole thing off. Um, everyone else could have their part, but it just takes one off note one off note and it is no longer uh, har uh in harmony it is no longer um a beautiful uh symphony but it becomes noise and tingling brass so when the bible talks about you know god says don't come to the altar because you're, it sounds like tingling brass and cymbal and noise this is what god is talking about your agreement is off you're not in harmony so let's let's dive into what we need to be in harmony with um i love singing a cappella because when you sing a cappella sometimes and those notes are there it actually produces a ringing sound that you can literally hear um that's how you'll know and be able to test listen our harmony was spot on and this is what god wants to do in your prayer your prayer is going to produce a sound that the harmony is in such alignment it's going to produce a sound that will echo in the spirit it is that very sound that produces the prayer to activate into manifestation it is that sound that causes the prayer to move into just from a request to actually a command and it pushes and moves mountains you make sense this is makes sense to you so we want to talk about um the symphony OK, um, and so then with that symphony, we understand if you look at a symphony, OK, hey, Petra, and you look at a symphony, we want to take a look at the different components of a symphony, because if the Bible is talking about that, um, you know, 
prayer and agreement. And we always talk about, can you agree with me in prayer? Can you agree with me in prayer? Let's have an understanding of what we're actually saying so that we can apply the scripture correctly. Because most of us, again, we are calling prayer warriors to come in agreement with us. And I'm doing quotations, not as a disrespect to uh, uh, people being called prayer warriors or people who are known for prayer warriors, no disrespect, but we feel like their prayers can get closer to God or higher to God than ours. And God does not, um, um, there's no scripture that backs that. God is saying, well, my children call me. You always hear him and, and he puts it in that context. But let's talk about the comp components of um, a symphony, okay? Uh, it says a symphony has a conductor, a symphony has a score, and a symphony has an orchestra. A score is music or sheet music, what they're using to actually uh, play or, you know, guide them in what notes to play, uh, what notes to sing, things like that. So that's the, the or you know, and the orchestra are the band members, the musicians. OK, so those are the three things that make up a symphony, a symphony. OK, so now let's put it into what we need in prayer for ourselves, OK, for us to be able to be in harmony. Let's break down what this symphony of prayer is going to look like. One, who is the conductor of the symphony? Holy Spirit. So write that down. Holy Spirit is the conductor of the symphony. When he lifts his baton, he's letting you know when to go, what to do, what not to do. It is very um, important. Uh, sometimes there are times where God says, don't pray. I want you to um, dance. I want you to worship. I want you. All of those are parts of prayer, but you must understand the different types of prayers there are in order to know what to do. So that Holy Spirit is the conductor. He'll tell you when to hit the high note. He'll tell you when to hit the low note. He'll tell you when to just lay in prayer and soak. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why it is very important. The, uh, the second thing is the score. What is the score? Thank you, Rhonda. The score is uh, the word of God. OK, here's my problem. We have a lot of people praying, but they do not have. Um, <laughs> yes. See, exactly. Tamika, she said God has her singing this morning. Um, you're not a singer, but that was the Holy Spirit conducting you on what needed to break the atmosphere. So those are moments uh, where you will find that God will literally he, sometimes he'll tell me to go for a walk and just clear your mind. And in that moment, God will speak to me. So the score is the word of. God. It is the Logos and the Rhema. Okay. The Logos word is the written word of God. The Rhema word is maybe something that God spoke to you uh, through a prophetic utterance, through your time of prayer, um, maybe through a promise, through a message is something that really resonated with you. And you know that it was God speaking directly to you. That will be considered the Rhema word of God. And this is a problem. And this is where the enemy will defeat us in prayer every time because we don't know the score. You cannot show up as a musician or a singer. You cannot show up and say, oh, I'm ready to sing. I'm ready to play. And you don't know the music. And so this is our approach to prayer when we're coming to be in harmony. Remember, it says if to agree and it's not just agreeing with that person, holding hands with that person. There's other components that you have to be in agreement with in order to have effective prayer. And again, effective prayer is not length or time, it is actual things happening and shifting because you pray. Do you see the difference? And again, that, that really gets my goat. <laughs> it really grabs my goat when people say, yeah, I'm a prayer warrior um, and I've been praying about this thing for 30 years and they have length of time, which means they built up endurance in prayer, which is important. And we're going to talk about it in later studies. Um, but that does not classify you as an effective prayer warrior since we want to use the title. I'm using the quotes, not as disrespect, but just to, you know, because again, the hierarchy, I'm always against the hierarchy if it's not in the Bible. And we built these things, um, you know, around ourselves. And, you know, I can just envision. I remember I was raised in church. I actually like grew up under a pew. I promise you. 
Um, and my children were raised the same way. And we had these mothers, uh, no disrespect to them, or these prayer warriors that you didn't even try to approach God. You just would run to the prayer warrior, right? I mean, you felt like because you touched his or her hand, that that was agreement. And this is what the Lord is saying. No, the Holy Spirit is the conductor. So he's the one in charge. He has to lead you. Okay. The second um, part of the symphony is the score, which is the will of God through his word. So again, your prayer should be in alignment with the word of God. Here's an example of um, prayer not in alignment. Lord, kill them. I'm just saying. Lord, kill them. When David was praying about his enemies, we can look at those as our spiritual enemies, like the spirit of rejection, um, the, the lying spirit, uh, the spirit of jealousy. Uh, it might be an operation in a person. So when we say, Lord, kill my enemies, we're speaking about the spirit in operation. But Jesus said, it is not his will that any shall perish. So you cannot pray, kill them, when the word of God says it is not his will that any should perish. So you see how you're not reading the score. And so you will show up when the Holy Spirit is trying to conduct you and lead you to a place, you will not be, you won't know the music. So you'll be praying all types of prayers. You'll be praying all kinds of weird things. And then you'll be sitting back saying, I don't understand why my prayers aren't being answered. Well, one, you have to know the score. In musical terms, we would say you got to know the music. You got to know the material. And that is God saying you got to know his word. So every prayer, and write this down, every prayer that you have, Put a scripture with it. It should be partnered with the scripture. I'm telling you, I have seen miracles. I have seen signs and I have seen wonders just by adding that to my prayer. Okay. I mean, and I can go in and I love prayer and I build up the endurance in prayer. I can spend hours in prayer, but I want you to, I'm challenging you now. This is my challenge to you. Everything that you have on your prayer list, I want you to put a scripture to it. If you cannot find a scripture for it, it probably is not on God's agenda for you to pray or have. I'm just going to say, <laughs> I'm just going to say that. And that's a hard peel, but I would rather you have understanding and gain victory than attempt and fight. And then what happens is the enemy can say, the Lord doesn't hear you. The Lord uh, has rejected you. No, he's not rejected you. And it's not that he doesn't hear. We have ample amounts of scripture that prove that. What's happening is that you're not reading the music. You don't have the score, every part of it in God's word. So that is my challenge for you, Promise Life. And I would love to see you post those um, in the group, even after the live, I want you to put a scripture with it. If you are believing God to walk in um, healing and restoration for your family, put a scripture with it. Okay. Um, if you are feeling lonely, um, I love the scripture. The, the Lord says, I set the lonely in families so that way you don't have to be alone. So then you start commending your family, your tribe to come. There's a scripture. There is something in God's written word that you can pair and partner with your request. That's going to solidify it. That's going to equip it and arm it. Okay. That's the score. The third thing are, uh, you, the, the, the musicians, you will be considered the musicians, the one that are playing the instruments. The strategies we're going to talk about are the instruments. You're not the instrument. You're the musician playing the instrument. Okay. I'm hoping this makes sense. If I need to slow down, I want, I will slow down. I get excited about teaching it, but I want to make sure you have these strategies because this is going to take your prayers to the next level. I am telling you, I have, since I've started putting the scriptures with my prayer and then pronouncing the scriptures as I'm praying what God is doing. Guess what? Ladies, I have ladies and gentlemen, I have seen these things answered literally in days. Minister Lorraine is on here. She is an absolute witness. I have seen prayers and declaration of mine answered in days, um, sometimes the same day. And it's no boast on me. I'm just following this pattern. I'm coming in agreement with the symphony. I'm not trying to fight the process, okay? So now I'm gonna give you the list of the 12 strategies, okay? I'm gonna give you the list of the 12 strategies. We're not going to talk about all 12 um, here because I want to take my time on all of them, um, but we're going to talk about two today. The 12 strategies, so make sure you have your pen and your paper. Make sure you write these down because this, again, these are your, these are your keys, lady. These are your weapons. I always talk about what? Doing damage to the enemy's 
kingdom. You want to take out bombs and grenades in the spirit and begin to slice the enemy and cut him to and fro. These are going to help you do that. Okay. First uh, strategy or type of prayer is praise. Okay. She said, can I repeat the orchestra? Absolutely. The orchestra are the musicians and the musicians are us. We are the vessels. The instruments that we're going to play in the orchestra symbolically are the types of prayers. So what I'm about to give you the list of are the types of prayers or the instruments that you're going to play in this symphony of prayer. Does that make sense? The list I'm getting ready to give you right now are the instruments that you're going to play in this symphony of prayer. Okay, ready? All right, looks like we're good. One, the first one is gonna be praise. And someone can go ahead and type these in the comments. You know I love the feedback. The second one is thanksgiving. The third one is worship. The fourth one is petition. The fifth one, and I didn't number these, so I'm going to have to keep track. The fifth one is intercession. The sixth one is supplication. Okay. Command is going to be the next one. Commitment. Okay. Dedication. Persistence. Ooh, y'all are good. Ooh, y'all are good. I see those notes in the comments. Keep them coming. Blessings and curses. I'm going to go through the list one more time for those who are taking notes. Trust me, ladies, you don't want to not take this. These are going to be our 12 strategies or our 12 instruments. Now, there are more that the Bible lists. But these are the 12 that I have compiled to be the most effective and they cover a, a variety of, 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 of prayer strategies, okay? The, uh, this definitely is not an all-exclusive list. Uh, there's definitely more, but I picked out and highlighted 12 to give us a good foundation and base that could help us just take our prayer to not just prayer requests, to effective prayers. Um, it says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. That is a person who can pray and shift atmospheres. That is a person who can pray and begin to tear down and dismantle principalities. That is a person who can pray and see manifestation and pray for healing and has the faith to do so. So I'm going to give you the list again. Praise, thanksgiving, worship, petition, intercession, supplication, command, commitment, dedication, persistence, blessings, and curses. Okay. You got the list. I want to make sure you got the list. And this is where we're going to, now we're not going to talk about all of them today on this live, but we are going to uh, break down too. Today, we're going to be talking about praise and thanksgiving. Those are the two instruments in our prayer symphony that we're going to talk about today. Those are the two that we're going to learn um, how to masterfully pray. Okay. That it's very important because, um, let's see, what do I want to, I want to take you. Now, let me go back. Go to Romans 8. She said, what was after intercession? Intercession, supplication. Okay. And I'm taking my time because I feel the teaching anointing. And I want to ensure that all of you are, 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 are keeping up because I'm telling you, when I, when, I, when I tell you, I have seen miracles, signs, and wonders. Just, just by adding these things to my, um, to, to my prayer in my arsenal of prayer. Okay. Intercession is a weapon. All right. And so let's go to Romans eight and 14. And this is very important. Why uh, we broke down the three, uh, um, components or three 
uh, things, categories that make up a symphony. You have the conductor, Holy Spirit, the score, the word of God, the revealed word of God in the orchestra, which is you. Those are the three things that you need to come into agreement. And this is why Romans 8 and 14 says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Just as the Holy Spirit leads us to understand God's will and scripture, he will also lead us in prayer. So this is why um, there are times where I felt like, oh my gosh, I just need to pray. I woke up um, and I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to pray. And I had words prepared. And when I got into his presence, the conductor, Holy Spirit said, no, I just want you to speak in tongues. That's it. I don't want you to have an understanding of what you're saying. This is what I'm requiring for the moment. Um, and that happened to me this morning. Um, and the Lord began to give me word of knowledge. Um, he told me to stand in front of my map, you know, this is something that I do often. I stand in front of my map um, in my office and you guys have seen the map and I just begin to speak in tongues like the Holy Spirit revealed to me. And I mean, I did it for about 30 minutes, just tongue straight. Um, again, prayer warrior is not the length of time, it's the effectiveness of the prayer. And so as I begin, the Lord began to highlight Russia to me. And he said, I'm getting ready to do something with Russia. I'm going to birth a movement. And I was like, what? I don't know anything about Russia. I don't know anyone in Russia. Um, yeah, so, okay. And he gave me a word of knowledge. He said, the man Peterson is going to start the revival. Don't know a Peterson, never heard of it. Haven't seen anything in the news about it. And I said, okay, Lord. And then, um, you know, he said, this person is going to start the revival um, in Russia. I said, all right. Then as I begin to journal after my prayer and just was capturing what the Lord had said to me, then God said, look up the name Peterson in Russia. Oh my God, was I wowed. I looked up the name Peterson in Russia and it is some uh, man that is like world renowned that I didn't know. <laughs> and his name is Jordan Peterson and he is in Russia right now fighting a sickness and disease and he's been there for some months, okay? And when they asked him, um, because apparently he does all these self-help books, he's a big guru on that and now he's sick in Russia and he's to the point where he can't really leave the country until he gets better. Better. And the reporter asked him, was he a Christian? And he said, I guess to answer that question blatantly, yes. I did not know this man. I've never heard of him ever in my life. You guys could look it up. And that was something that when you let Holy Spirit be the conductor, he will reveal the mysteries. He will reveal where the enemy is. He will reveal where the blessings are. He will reveal the strategy that you need to win in the day. So that's, that was my, that was my testimony of why and how this really does work. So let's go into praise and thanksgiving. Okay. And so praise is offered to God for who he is and what he does in general. Okay. Praise is offered to God for who he is and what he does in general. So let me help that because oftentimes, um, especially in our, uh, um, African American churches or our Pentecostal churches, we think praise is a, oh, have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried? You know, that's what we think praise is. I'm not saying that that's not praise. Um, but that's not you know, the sole definition of praise. Praise is offered to God for something for who he is and what he does in general. You give God praise because he is God. You give God praise because he exists and he created you. He created the universe. He created the stars. Um, and so you praise God for what he does in general. Praise is verbal. So this type of prayer requires you to open your mouth. Okay. There are times where prayers where you're silent and Holy Spirit is doing all the speaking. Uh, but this type of uh, prayer strategy or instrument in our symphony of prayer is loud. It, it makes noise. It is audible. It is not quiet. Um, it is, it does, uh, the Bible says, make a joyful noise, all ye land. Um, it's, it's powerful. Okay. This is the type um, of, of instrument that has a sole purpose. And we'll talk about the purpose later. Um, later on in this teaching and then Thanksgiving Thanksgiving is what God has done for you in particular notice the difference this is why the Bible says let everything that has breath praise the Lord why because God is if he does nothing else God has been good 
If he does nothing else, which we know that that's not true because we all have promises. Amen. If God does nothing else, we know that he's good. He's a good father. Uh, we woke up, even if our leg falls off, he's still a good father. It does not change who he is and all his wonders and all his splendors. God is amazing. God is awesome. He's terrific. He's fabulous. I'm getting excited just saying it. God is beautiful. He's holy. He's faithful. God is good. That's praise. Now our Thanksgiving is specific. Now, we've talked about this promised life before with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a weapon, okay? It is a weapon in our prayer arsenal. It is our instrument that we can play as we're going before the Lord. And Thanksgiving, these two musical instruments are very powerful. I will tell you, and the reason why I chose to start with these two, because this is the basics of breaking through. I know that you heard, uh, sometimes you feel like in prayer, you just have a hard time breaking through. I've even talked to my intercessory team. Um, those who are on here, they know I've said this. Don't try to force the people. Don't try to push the people, especially if you're doing corporate prayer. But even in your personal time, I know you felt like, uh, you know, I know I have, um, even before I, I, I had these tools, I felt like sometimes my prayers were just hitting the ceiling and I really wasn't able to be effective. I just felt like I prayed, but that thing was still on me. Like I still felt the heaviness. I still felt the weight of the problem. Um, my spirits weren't lifted. Yeah, I was saying words. Um, um, but yeah, so, um, okay. I see the question. It says, can you explain? Yes. So Thanksgiving is gratitude. So you are thanking God for a specific thing that he has done or he said he was going to do. Cause I believe, um, giving it on credit, um, because you know, his word is faithful that he's going to do in your life. So what that would look like for me is Lord, I thank you that I have two, um, 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 boys, young black men, and you have protected them all this time. I thank you that my husband makes it home to me every night. I'm grateful for that. God, I thank you that I could be lost all of the stuff that I've been going to through, I literally should be crazy. Lord, I am so thankful that you have sought to preserve me. I do not deserve it. There's nothing that I can do. I, I don't care how long I pray or fast. I cannot be righteous enough to deserve your goodness. Lord, I thank you. So that is Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, I'm telling you when I start doing it, I get excited already. I don't know about you, but I feel like I want to just Praise and thank him this, this whole time. <laughs> um, praise is you're just praising God. Your, your majesty, your splendor, your, your works, your wonders, uh, your marvelous, your magnificent. Those are the things. And it has nothing to do with if your prayer answered or not. I'm just praising him because he's worthy of it. He's the king. And he's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of majesty. And so um, it is not predicated on if something is answered. It is not predicated on feelings. Um, both of these are not predicated on feelings, but those are the difference. Um, you know, uh, it's not uh, that hallelujah is the highest praise. That is not biblical. Um, again, when we do stuff, we have to make sure that it's in the Bible. Um, I see where they get that hallelujah is the same word in all languages. So I, you know, I see where they're trying to say hallelujah is the highest praise. I can go to Africa and say hallelujah. They understand me. I can go to China and say hallelujah. They understand me. So it is uh, the one word uh, of praise that transcends um, you know, uh, 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 ethical boundaries, uh, language boundaries. Uh, so it is that word, but it is not the highest praise. Um, I don't think there is one particular word that is the highest praise. I think it is your heart that makes it the highest praise. There's been times where I'm like, okay, God, yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm going through the motions, but there's times where I kick into that third gear and I'm like, God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, you are just so worthy. Look at you. You, you saw fit to create me for such a time as this. You saw fit to put me right in 2020 doing exactly what I'm doing. Lord, you are amazing. Who could phantom your way? See, I get to praising him. Listen, ah, yoroboko yasi. Woo, see, you can't start talking about praising God. So you notice how even as I've been giving you these examples of praise and thanksgiving, it's already started to shift the atmosphere. I know you notice it in your home. Just when you um, begin to think on the goodness of Jesus, the old saints would say that, um, and it was uh, a powerful, uh, but just imagine it, not just thinking on the goodness of Jesus. Why don't you, uh, begin to declare the goodness of Jesus? That's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not thinking. Although the old saints say that, and I understand what they meant. When I think of the goodness, it begins a praise. No, Thanksgiving is uttered. It is declared. 
I tell you right now, when I get things for my children, I don't want them to say thank you in their mind right when you give someone a gift or you do go out of your way or you give someone something you want to hear or you expect to hear the words thank you uttered you it's not quiet so both of these uh strategies are prayer um musical instruments in our symphony are loud instruments i would maybe liken them to the the drums or the tr um the trombones very loud deep instruments because they require you to open your mouth you don't want to just limit it to thinking on the goodness of jesus you want to declare there's a reason why um sound penetrates principalities the Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities where? In high places. I also believe um, that there's a reason why we have different notes or scales on the piano. You have those notes that have deeper, darker tones. You have those that are higher notes. Uh, if you've done anything in music or been in church or choir, you know that there's a tenor alto soprano soprano sings your higher note tenor sings your lower note this is not a music class but just to help us understand it and there are things that are in the air uh there's different principalities you have here the earthly realm that i would uh say tenor note so the things that you hit here in this space and then you have the um the second heaven or the middle heaven the bible talks about where the enemy is okay um and you have that alto note and then you have the heavens or the third heavens that john talks about in the Bible, you have that higher note. So I believe as you begin to utter these praises, there are levels to your praise. And depending on how sincere and how determined you are to break through in prayer using these musical instruments in our prayer symphony, it is going to penetrate all the way up to the third heaven. Okay. So this is why these are important. These two these two, uh, again, we're calling a musical instruments because it's our symphony of prayer. Okay. For those of you just hopping on and we're talking about the Holy Spirit is the conductor. Uh, the score is the word of God and we are the musicians in the orchestra. And these are our musical instruments that today we're talking about praise and thanksgiving. Now, let me tell you why these are important. It is very important, especially during this time, this pandemic time is because because these two particular musical instruments fight, combat, and destroy heaviness, worry, anxiety, stress, fear. These two in particular are going to, their specific design is to combat those five things. Fear, worry, anxiety, heaviness, Okay. It's, it's, these are your weapons. So if you are feeling heavy, if you are feeling weighted, God doesn't want you to begin supplication. You see what I'm saying? So if you offer supplication, God, I just really need you to fix this situation. I just really need you to do this. And if you do this, I'll feel better. No, that's not the strategy. That's not what's going to combat heaviness. That's what's not what's going to destroy fear. That is not what's going to tear down worry and anxiety. What you need in your arsenal, if you're pulling out your prayer strategies and you're looking for your weapon or your musical instrument to hit at the right time, you need praise and thanksgiving. I'm trying to tell you, you need praise and thanksgiving. It is going to destroy that. Okay. Heaviness, worry, fear, and anxiety. Okay. It also builds your faith. These two particular, out of the, out of the 12 strategies, these two in particular, yes, and stress. Thank you, Alyssa. These to build your faith. The Bible says we go from faith to faith. There's levels. So you cannot, um, you know, I'm telling you now, as God is opening things up to you, promised life, as you're walking into new spheres, as you're activating your gifts, especially of those of you who've been taking the prophetic training, now your faith has to go up because you have to believe God for bigger things. You have to believe God to carry and lead people. Um, you know, you can't just allow uh, the same old yet yesterday's faith. We talked about this in one of the trainings. You don't want the old manna. There was a reason why God told them they could not store up manna. Why? Because what ma yesterday's manna does not satisfy today's problems. Yesterday's manna cannot satisfy today's hunger. 
Yesterday's manna cannot feed today's needs. So God has to give you new manna every morning. Why? Because it might be different. So God might have been feeding you. I remember when I first got saved, God used to just coddle me. I mean, I would, you know, I didn't want to step on a bug. I just didn't want to see anything die. I was just so conscious in my new um, salvation. But now that God has given me a mandate to equip women all over the United States, uh, my faith level is different. Okay, so this is why uh, in the Bible that when they tried to store the manna, what happened? It turned into maggots. You can find that in Exodus. It turned into maggots. It rotten. It spoiled. And this is why we do not see effective prayer. Effective prayer is shifting the atmosphere, tearing down principalities, dismantling the enemy's um, um, tactics, and seeing victory in our lives because we have old manna. We're taking yesterday's strategies yesterday's techniques and trying to apply them to today's problem. And God is saying, no, daughter, that is not for you. I want you to come up and wake up in the morning and be ready. Okay. For me to lead you, let the Holy spirit be the conductor. It says those who are led by the spirit, those are the sons of God. So that is safe to say that if you're not being led by the spirit, you're not walking in your sonship. And God is saying in this season, you cannot afford not to be a son. You cannot afford to put down your title and put down who God says you are so that you can follow your own path. No, God is leading us into a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Okay. And so, uh, praise, that's what it's going to defeat. Now let's go, um, to Psalms 48 and one. Let's go to Psalms 48 and one. I love that. If this is good to you, just put some, um, hearts in the comments. If this is good to you, I know I'm not really teaching, you know, uh, hyped up. I'm actually feeling really excited. I want to go run right now, but I want to make sure that we have this so that we understand when the enemy comes in like a flood, we don't hit him with a sponge, right? A sponge is not going to do anything for a flood. We need a dam. We need the Holy Spirit to come in and build a wall to stop the flood. And this is why you have to apply the right strategy to the problem uh, that you're going in for prayer. Okay. So praise and thanksgiving is going to do just that. So let me find my scripture. Okay. 48 and 12 says, tells us great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Period. Now, why that's important? Because again, when you're taking that instrument of praise and you're sounding that in your prayer time, that praise, it says great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. What you're announcing is his greatness over your situation. What you're doing is you're dethroning everything that is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and, 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 um, trying to get you thrown off, trying to get you to bow down to it. When you come into your prayer and God is saying, okay, today I want praise. You, what you're doing is say, the Lord is great. You're putting him back on his throne. You're dethroning everything else that's in your life. You're telling fear. You got to go. You're telling uh, heaviness. You got to go worry. You got to go stress. You can't stay here. That's what praise does. And then Thanksgiving builds your faith. Thanksgiving fortifies you. This is why this is a, a very important tool um, in your, in your, in your, uh, in your prayer, uh, you know, kit, if you will, the prayer strategies, these two are very important. This is why I started here because oftentimes we can't even get into commanding. We can't even get into blessings and cursings. We can't even get into dedication or, or worship for that matter, uh, which are all prayer strategies, um, without these two, we have to first start here. Matter of fact, David tells us, what does it say? Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That was the example of the temple. The temple is made up of three parts. You have the courts, the outer courts, and the holies of holies. Okay. In courts, inner, um, outer courts, inner courts, holy of holies. Praise gets you into the courts or into the presence. Okay. The thanksgiving gets you into that inner court. And then now you have direct access to the holies of holies. What is in the holies of holies? It is the mercy seat. It is the, it's grace that's there. And so it is grace again. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking about all the teachings I've done. So let me just back up. Grace 
is not just to save you from, um, you know, internal damnation. Grace is not there just to save you from your sins. Grace is also a, a, a superpower or fuel to your purpose. Grace is what causes you to be able to qualify for the job when you know you didn't have no skills to do it. Grace is what causes your marriage to be restored and gives you the strength to be able to speak life into that spouse who's being hard-headed, who's being stubborn, and you know you don't want to really uh, live <laughs> live with them anymore, but grace will give you that, that grace, that power to be able to navigate through that troubling time with ease. It'll look easy to those who are watching you. Grace, you need grace to raise your children. Grace will teach you how to parent, and when you make a mistake, grace will step in and it'll be the gap filler. Um, I'm writing a, a ebook, and a part of that is talking about how grace is a gap filler. So where you tap out, grace taps in and it will fill the gap for you. So this is why when we're going into our prayer closets, ladies, a part of the instruments that you want to master in the prayer symphony is praise and thanksgiving. You want to master those because if you have heaviness, worry, anxiety, fear, or stress, you will not be able to go past the outer courts. You won't. You will not be able to go past the outer, outer courts. So I want you to put in the comments, grace is the gap filler. Because ultimately, as we approach prayer, there's these levels that are transcending. It's almost like shifting a gear in a car. When we were, when um, I remember I was learning how to drive, it, I, it took me forever to get out of first gear. Like it took me months and months and months. I mean, I stripped many a gears trying to, um, you know, navigate and learn how to drive a stick. But after I learned how to drive a stick, I could get out of first gear with no problem. And this is what's happening in our prayer. This is why we're praying, but we're leaving that, that prayer moment, that intimate space, still feeling the same, still feeling unsatisfied, still feeling like nothing happened, still feeling like, um, you know, there's no hope. It's still undone. And this is why we are often um, reliant on the prayers of others because we feel like maybe they have the strength to get me through. Maybe they have the strength to get me through. And God is saying, no, you have grace and grace is the gap filler. So when you're tired, I tell you in my word that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So even in that, that turns into praise. Remember, I said, every time you come to God with a type of request or prayer, partner with the scripture. So even if you come into prayer, which I do often, um, if the Lord wakes me up in the middle of the night, that is my, uh, uh, time with the Lord. Uh, he seems to like to wake me up or keep me up and I'm up till 12 and one in the morning and you guys are asleep. Um, you know, not all of you, but some of you, and that is my time of prayer. And, and I'm tired. I'm literally physically tired. Not that, you know, I don't want to go to prayer or anything like that. I'm physically tired. And then I begin to say, Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. God, I thank you for joy. I thank you. I laugh in your presence. Lord, at thy right hands is, um, um, is joy and at thy... Um, uh, uh, in thy presence is fullness of joy and at thy right hands are pleasures forevermore. God, I'm in your presence. So th I thank you for the joy. Lord, your strength is made perfect in my weakness. I'm weak right now, but you are so strong. That's praise. And I know you felt the, the igniting just in saying that. So I dare you right now where you are to put a praise on whatever it is that you've been facing. That is prayer. You think praise is a part of the service that you attend that has fast music. No. Yes. I, I, yes, yes, yes. We will, we will do um, um, the teachings on it. That's all a part of the series. We're going to go through and dissect all of these. Um, but all of you have a part. We talked a little bit about the prayer watches when we did that our midnight prayer. Um, we had everyone in different states that were hitting different watches of prayer and we begin to bombard heaven, right? And dethrone the enemy's kingdom. So this is why it's very important. So when you're even coming to the throne of God, you don't have to come like you're a super Christian. This is what um, vexes my absolute soul um, because you feel defeated already going into prayer. Why? Several reasons. One, you feel like I'm not a prayer warrior, which is a lie. God says, when you call upon me, I will answer. That's, that's his children. 
you you confess to believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that scripture applies to you. It didn't say when the apostle comes. It didn't say when the pastor comes. It didn't say when the prophet comes. It didn't say when the teacher comes. It didn't say when the evangelists come, which are the fivefold gifts. It says when you come. It didn't give a tighter. It didn't say when the deacon come. It didn't say when the, the, the church mother uh, come. It didn't say when the main head chief intercessor uh, of the global extravaganza come. No, it says when you call, I will answer. That's all of those who are children of God have access to that promise. Lord, I'm calling upon you and you promise to answer me. So Lord, as I come before your throne, I begin to thank you because you have already answered prayer. And, and so don't, feel defeated when you come into prayer and you feel like, who I'm a little tired. That just means that the first instrument you need to play in your prayer symphony is praise and thanksgiving. That, that's the Holy Spirit trying to trigger to you. Don't ask for anything at this time. Don't try to decree and declare again about the, you know, the, the, the slicing hands. We feel like the more we move our hands, the more effective the prayer is. That is not true. So you want to make sure that you're following the Holy Spirit and that's an indicator that is an indicator right there. You don't want to just um, go into the to the presence of God trying to I curse the enemy because we can curse the enemy. Absolutely. But if you're tired in your body and you're feeling weak and you're feeling defeated and you're feeling anxious about a situation, that is not time for you to start releasing curses and blessings. That's the time for you to use uh, your prayer weapon strategies of praise and thanksgiving. Praise and thanksgiving are a part of of uh somebody said now it's like saying listen i and i'm one i use my hands i talk to the enemy i get real bold about it but your power is not in the moving of the hands your power is into letting the holy spirit navigate you because the holy spirit is the knower of all truth he knows everything so if i'm following the holy spirit i don't have to worry about my prayers being off i don't have to worry about my prayers being not effective i don't have to worry about missing god in prayer why because i'm yielding to holy spirit and that is what that scripture is talking about if we go back to matthews 18 Verses 19 through 20, he says, when two come together and agree on earth, you're agreeing on earth. Holy Spirit is here. You need to agree with God's word and you might want to partner with somebody. But you have to first come into agreement with the Holy Spirit and let him lead you and tell you which strategy to use in prayer. And today we're talking about the two praise and thanksgiving. And in, in another part of that scripture says, um, agree on earth concerning anything they ask. It will be done for them concerning anything they're asked. Here's a promise, promise life concerning them. It will be done for them. So this is how we would pray that this is why this is how we would come in. I would say, Lord, I thank you. I come into agreement with you, Holy Spirit. Woo, I felt that right there. I come into agreement with you, Holy Spirit. I dare you to type that into the comments. I come in agreement with you, Holy Spirit. Because again, we, we default to, I need to call um, Minister Lorraine as our, listen, she is our Shamar prophet. She is our prayer warrior prophet. She covers promised life. Uh, she does the Wednesday prayer. Uh, her and uh, co-pastor um, Stacy, they do the intercessory prayer. And these are powerful women of God. However, they have to come into agreement, not with each other. First, they have to come in agreement with Holy Spirit. Okay. So you come into agreement with Holy Spirit. And I come in agreement with your word. And now I can come in agreement with someone else. You see what I'm saying? This is, this is our strategy, ladies. And then the text, I'm still in Matthew 18, nine, verses 19 through 20. It says, it will be done for them. For where, now here's the caveat. Here's the disclaimer. Here's the disclaimer that God always puts in. For where two or three are gathered together, in my name. Ooh, right there. In my name. You cannot gather because you feel like, um, and I've had this happen where I've had people say, uh, my husband's not doing what I think he should be doing. So I'm going to call all the prayer warriors. I'm going to get them together and we're going to come together and we're going to pray to get him to do what I need him to do. No, that is manipulation. 
and it, manipulation is as witchcraft. So you find yourself dabbling into witchcraft and this is why things are not coming through for you. This is why it's not happening for you because you have not come into agreement with Holy Spirit and you have not gathered with those uh, uh, who you consider women of faith, men of faith. You have not come into agreement with them in the name of the Lord. See, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. When the righteous run in, we are saved. And if you're still getting attacked and hit by the spears of the enemy, perhaps you are not run doing it in the name of the Lord. Ooh, does this make sense to you? I'm, I'm about to run. I, I'm trying to tell you, I'm about to run. And so, um, um, we're two or three are gathered together in my name. In my name, you must do it in the name of Jesus. What that simply means, it's not just saying in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That is not solely what that context is talking about. In his name means according to his will. That is like when um, we send an ambassador to another country, they are doing it in the name of the United States or in the name of the president. They are representing. So God is saying, when you guys come together, you better be doing it in my name. If you want to see it come to pass, do it in my name. Do it as a representation of me. Doing it, do it uh, with my backing. Do it with my seal of approval. Especially if you're following Holy Spirit, you won't have to worry about that. But you do it in his name or in his authority, his strength, his leading. As does it make sense? Woo, this is good to me. Listen. And then it says, here's the promise. Here's the promise. I am there in the midst of them. I am there in the midst of them. If we follow this strategy, ladies, you will not only see the results. Prayer is supposed to be effective. I don't know about you, but this is how I measure if someone uh, can get a prayer through that if you pray, things happen. Okay. I, that's how I measure it. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. Okay. And so, um, this is, this is what happens in prayer. We have to become one with Holy spirit. We have to become in agreement with Holy spirit. We have to pray his word, which is the score in the orchestra. Holy spirit is the conductor. And so this is how we have effective prayer. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of watered down prayer. I'm tired of, um, people just thinking that length qualifies effective prayer. That is a false narrative. It is a lie from the pit of hell. It is the biggest myth that the church has, 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 has preached as gospel. Again, I'm not saying that you should not build up endurance in prayer. I love prayer and I can spend hours in prayer. Yes, I can. I can just sit, I can lay, I can do all of the 12 strategies that we're going to learn. However, um, it is not, that does not qualify you to be effective in prayer. OK, the quality of effectiveness is the, the fruit of it. Did something happen? Did anything change? Were lives transformed because of it? Are we closer to Jesus because of your prayers? Or do we are we further from the Lord? Here's another thing I feel the Holy Spirit telling me to say, um, because most people go into witchcraft when it's coming to prayer uh, because they feel they can manipulate the situation. Again, um, you do not fast. And we're going to talk about that as we talk more about strategies. You don't fast to get God to do something. No, 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 no. That is manipulation. And we have been taught that and that is wrong. It is an error. It is not biblical. Let's look at Esther real quick. And we are almost done because we have been on here for an hour. If it's been good to you, let me know something. Put something in the comments. If you learned something, let me know. This is good. This is good. This is good. Um, but let's look at Esther really quick before we go. Esther, Mordecai, he rent. We know he uh, rent his garments. He had on sackcloth and ashes and he was fasting in the courtyards. Okay. Then um, Esther tried to get him up. And then we know that Esther called all of her maidens and stuff to fast. God did not change his mind about anything. God did not intervene. No. What happened? Esther's heart changed and it changed to where she was able to now hear the instructions of the Lord. So fasting removes the blockage. It removes your flesh. It kills your flesh so that you now can hear what God has already been saying. Esther was put on the throne to save the people of God. God had already gave an answer to Haman's a plot to kill Israel and Esther was that solution. It took fasting for her to realize it, not for God to move. So we do not fast to manipulate, control, or get God to do something. You fast so that you can strip and remove the blockage of your flesh that is saying, 
Uh, you don't want to do that. What did Esther say? I might lose my head. How are you going to fear death? I might, um, I might lose my crown. I might go back to being a peasant. She was selfish. In selfish motives, you can never hear God correctly, so you cannot fulfill your purpose. And here, the whole nation was getting ready to die because she would not step out and fulfill her purpose. But fasting removes the blockage. This is why Jesus says, these demons come out. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. These demons come out by what? Fasting and praying. Not that the fasting is going to intimidate the demons. No, you're just going to kill your flesh so they don't have another spirit to partner with when you're trying to cast them out. Oh my yadaba. So this is why we need good teaching. I'm telling you, this is the office that I'm walking in on today is the teaching. So why when we walk, we can walk with confidence and boldness and assurity. When you know something and you know that you know that you know something, you cannot be swayed. You cannot be moved. You cannot uh, be tripped up, hoodwinked or bamboozled. No, you can stand firm. And once Esther fasted and her maidens around her, that's another lesson. Oh my God. Who I just don't have enough time my god it's already been an hour so here's another lesson if you are going somewhere those around you also have to die to their flesh or fast turn over their plate this is why you would actually ask someone to partner with you in fasting not so that all of us are fasting god will hear us and do what we need him to do no god has already spoken God has already uh, uh, provided you as the answer. He just needs you to remove the blockage so that you can hear his instructions clearly. Fasting and praying. So this is why the demons come out by fasting and praying. Because you, uh, the Bible, Jesus tells us that Beelzebub cannot cast out Beelzebub. A devil cannot cast out a devil. So if you're full of devils, this is what fasting is going to do. It's going to crucify or kill your devils. So that when you're going to fight a devil, you now ah, have the power to cast him out. Okay, so this is why praise and thanksgiving is important. Now, let me also help you. If, if you um, have a hard time entering into the presence of the Lord, <laughs> she said, I can stay on for another hour. I love you, Judy. Uh, if you have a hard time entering into the presence of the Lord, don't you let the enemy trick you and make you think that you are less than or you don't pray or, you know, um, I hear people say, oh, I'm just off. I'm not, you know, I'm not feeling it. I guarantee you, you're trying to use yesterday's manna to fulfill today's need. Anytime you're approaching the throne of grace, there's never any cond condemnation from the Lord. But if you're like, I'm just not feeling it. Um, I don't feel like it today. It's probably because you're playing the wrong instrument. Here's another thing. With instruments, they have to be tuned. Mm. You cannot just get up and pick up a piano. If it's been old and been sitting there, that piano has to be tuned. There's a frequency. There is a sound. There is a sound that heaven is looking for. And God is saying what you have to do when you're using the weapons of praise and thanksgiving, this is with the scripture. When you pray the word, you are fine tuning. You are tuning your instrument. And this is where the enemy gets us because we don't want to apply the word. We don't want to get in our word. We don't want to have to pair a scripture. We don't want to have to look for it. We will Google shoes. We will Google best uh, recipes. We will Google fashion uh, uh, collabs, how to put stuff together. But we will not uh, uh, look for his word. And God is saying, daughter, you are living beneath your privilege because you're coming into prayer as, as if you're not a son. I led you to pray. This is where you belong. This is our time where we commune and sub together. And when you begin to praise me, God says he inhabits the praises of his people. So if you are feeling alone, why not praise? If you're feeling alone, why not offer up a worship, a praise? Why? Because now you're not going to be alone. Holy Spirit is going to come and sup with you and dwell with you and love on you and begin to build you. And when you begin to offer thanksgiving, it begins to fuel you. It fortifies your soul. You are, you got rights. You got rights. You have rights. And the enemy has bamboozled us. Listen, ha, listen. The, the enemy has bamboozled us and we have made prayer so complex and so deep. And that's why I'm like, Lord, I thank you for these teachings. Begin to just thank God for teaching. Thank God for understanding. Come on, ladies, begin to thank him for revelation. Revelation is light. Revelation is not a deep, um, um, mystical topic or something like, Ooh, I didn't know that. Ooh, I didn't see that in the scripture. That's not revelation. Revelation is light illumination. Revelation comes into any space that's 
that's dark in your soul, any space that's dark in your emotions, any space that's dark in your mind, and it applies light. It illuminates it. So now you know how to navigate. You have a better understanding of things. This is what... Uh, um, this is what revelation does. And in prayer, we get revelation. I don't know about you, but there's times that I have been so dark. I'm like, God, I have no idea how I'm navigating this. But I put uh, in the words of my girl, Tasha Cobb, I put a praise on him. Again, praise is not reserved for the sanctuary. Matter of fact, as it, I did praise and worship, I was a praise and worship um leader for many years. I've been doing praise and worship since I was 17 years old. This is how God introduced me to the prophetic, introduced me to ministry. And I love praise and worship as a praise and worship leader. Let me tell y'all, y'all don't even praise in the sanctuary. We have to beg you to clap your hands. We have to beg you to stand. We have to beg you to wave. We have to do all of that. And so I know this is a clear indicator to me that you're reserving praise for just the sanctuary. When God is saying, no, praise is a prayer strategy. Praise is um, coupled in prayer. Praise is how you get access into my presence. And then Thanksgiving begins to build you and usher you in and prepare you to receive the grace of God. So these are not just, um, you know, praise is what I do. We love you, William, Mur Mur William Murphy, but it is also a prayer strategy. It is also a prayer strategy. Hello, Pastor Naisha. Thank you for joining us. It is a prayer strategy. It is a prayer strategy. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a prayer strategy. What does Thanksgiving do? It, okay, Lord, I hear you. Thanksgiving puts back on the armor. Thanksgiving puts back on the armor. I have to say this slow because when you are feeling defeated or you start feeling the blows of the enemy, what does that look like? What that looks like is when um, I, I got some bad news about one of my family members. And I mean, I almost crumbled and buckled to my knees. Um, and I said, oh God, I shouldn't have responded. I shouldn't have took it like that. Like I thought my faith was built up and I began to start downing myself. And God says, uh-uh, don't you believe the lie of the enemy? Every uh, warrior has a kink or their, or their armor gets worn. And so where your armor is worn or like a little piece or something might fall off or your shield gets chipped and the enemy saw that open space and he hit you there. That doesn't mean you don't have faith. That doesn't mean that you're weak. That doesn't mean that you're off. It just means that you need to go back and get your armor repaired. You need to go back and get what? Fortified. Thanksgiving does that. That's what Thanksgiving does. So when the, when the, when, when God gave me that revelation, then I went back and I said, listen, um, Lord, I thank you because I have seen you healed many a bodies. Lord, I thank you because you have healed my daughter from asthma. Lord, I thank you. I've seen you heal people from sexually transmitted diseases. I've laid hands on people and they've come back and said sexually transmitted diseases were healed. Even on Promise Life, we did a live and, and um, we began to pray for knees. And the ladies, uh, ladies, you have been sending me testimonies saying your knees uh, swelling went down. You were supposed to have surgery, but God began to heal and do something in your knees. And now the pain is gone. God has been doing healing. So I had to reinforce, reinforce my armor, go back and get repaired to my armor to block the, the blows of the enemy. It's not that you're weak. You notice how the lying spirit, as soon as the lying spirit, you know, he gets unleashed and you have to put the truth out there. The truth is I'm not weak. The truth is I'm, I was anointed today. I'm anointed yesterday and I'll be anointed tomorrow. God is with me. I am his daughter. I am his favorite. And you can claim that for yourself. Um, I am his beloved. Uh, Ephesians uh, uh, 6 tells us we are accepted into the beloved. I am a daughter of the most high God. He loves me. I have power because he gave it to me in the beginning. He said, I have dominion over everything in the earth. So so I, this, this is not erased. This is not erased, but the enemy comes to bamboozle you, hoodwink you and get you to, to come in agreement with what he's saying. So when that blow happened, I had to go into Thanksgiving. That was my prayer strategy. I had to go into Thanksgiving. I had to begin to thank God for what he had already. Uh, Tammy Flex watched this whole lot. Oh, thank you. Um, um, so, um, She's telling somebody, watch, I got you. Um, and so you have to fortify yourself with Thanksgiving. So then that's what you do is you go back in and you, I can run too, Patricia. Then you go back in. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, gee, I'm telling you, I'm burning up. I want to run right now. Then you go back and instead of saying, Lord, um, I, I'm off. Maybe I need to fast. See how you, you want to go to these uh, spiritual antics and ticks, uh, uh, tricks and manipulation games with God. You cannot manipulate him. Okay. What you have for the season is already in you. God is a good father. 
sure he plans and prepares. He's very intentional. So if you're in this season, you can handle it. If you're in, if you're encountering it, you have everything within you to be more than a conqueror. Okay. You just have to activate it and you have to let the Holy spirit come into agreement with him in your time of prayer. And don't, um, it might not be the time of supplication for you. This might be the time for praise and thanksgiving. Okay. Thanksgiving is going to fortify you. It's going to, uh, re, uh, uh, uh place your armor, uh, where it's been damaged or broken. Um, Ephesian uh, breaks it down about the armor of God, the shield of faith and all of those things. Well, I've watched uh, plenty of movies. I've never been in a war before, uh, but you know, guys know I love um, Avengers and I'll never forget when Thanos broke Captain America's shield. I was shook. I was like, ah, oh. now this is why prophetic uh, people can't watch movies because we get revelation off of everything. And instantly the Lord said, that's what the enemy does to you. That's what the enemy does to you. Captain America was still Captain America. Okay. He was still strong. He still had his strength. He still had a brilliant mind of military tactics. And just because the enemy broke his shield did not mean he was weaker. Did not mean he was less than. Didn't mean that God was mad at him or he was demoted in the Avengers. No. And this is what the enemy does. He might hit our shield and get a good blow in and it breaks our shield of faith. That does not mean that we are less than or God is mad or we're demoted. No, that means we just need to go back to the armory and begin to offer up thanksgiving to refortify our shield of faith or whatever armor the enemy might, um, the breastplate of righteousness. Maybe you fell in and slipped into sin. What do you do? You offer thanksgiving for grace and you repent and you apply the, uh, and get your blessed prayer to righteousness restored. This is the prayer strategies, ladies. These are the prayer strategies. So I thank you. I'm not going to continue because I can go. I'm feeling the flow and I love y'all. I cannot wait to meet with you guys in person. Um, once they open up everything fully and we're able to do that, we will definitely uh, give everyone plenty of time to get plane tickets and things like that. And we'll have a, an amazing time that we might um, glean and grow together. But this is our new series, ladies. It is the 12 strategies of prayer. Intercession is a weapon. And today we talked about two particular prayer strategies or prayer, um, our, our musical instruments and our prayer symphony. Okay. It's praise and thanksgiving. We're going to talk about next Thursday. We're going to talk about worship and petition. I'm going to try to do them two at a time. We'll see. We're going to talk about worship and petition. So stay tuned for next week. If you're like, oh my God, this was so much. Um, how do I uh, go back and look at this? I am going to upload it um, to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you can always go back and look at the teachings um, that we will have this for you. Okay. Because I don't know about you. I don't want to be a prayer warrior that has not won a single battle. What type of warrior is that? I want to be known. If if you are going to call me a prayer warrior, I want to be able to list some battles that I've won. Amen. I want to be able to go through the line and say, listen, God got me victory here. God got me victory there. Now, what I need from you ladies to do is share, share, share. We don't want to be the only ones that have the strategies to now be effective in prayer. We want our mothers. We want our first ladies. We want our pastor. We want our children. We want our, our, our home girl. Uh, we want our Thea. We want everybody, grandma, we want everybody to be equipped. Okay. So share, uh, yes, I need to take notes. I see you, Michelle. And so, uh, thank you so much ladies for joining me. You guys are amazing promise life. I am praying for you diligently. So take this opportunity to share uh, this video, invite someone to the Promise Life group. Um, if it has been a blessing to you, do not be selfish. Share the good news, right? <laughs> she said, I got three pages of notes. I love it. So we will be posting this and uploading it to our YouTube. Uh, <laughs> yes, yo, yes, I did. Okay. Oh, Minister Lorraine is putting the um, cash app. If you want to um, sow a seed into the word, I just pinned that to the comments there. You can uh, donate to the cash app. Um, we have, uh, let me tell you what your donations are going to be doing. Uh, we are getting ready to launch our um, 
chapters for the um, promised life. And what that's going to entail is we're going to teach you how to, um, you know, lead a group, how to teach. And what I'm doing right now, you're going to be able to do. It is not a, the Tamara show. It is the God show and welcome to it. And he wants to equip you and launch you out into the deep. So, so into the ministry. Uh, this is good ground. Uh, we definitely, um, I appreciate what you do. And as we're building the website and getting everything into place, it does does cost um, and so we don't want to give you anything raggedy we got some prayer journals that are coming for you and lots and lots of goodies for you so I love you be blessed make sure you do that um, and then what was the last thing I was going to say Oh, um, Saturday um, I'm gonna be popping on and I'm gonna be talking about it's gonna be Saturday early in the morning so make March your calendars because I'm not going to send in a, I'm not going to send an event. I'm going to do um, a teaching, a brief teaching on uh, the gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge. Those are prophetic functions mostly, but those are gifts in the body. And so on Thursday, we're going to deal with prayer. But all those who feel like they're called to the prophetic or feel prophetic unctions, and let me just help you, we are all called to prophesy. Paul said that I wish that you all would prophesy even more than you speak in tongues. And so I'm going to hop on. I have to be somewhere at nine. Um, so on Saturday, let's see, it'll probably be around seven, seven a.m. It's going to be early. It's going to be early. Uh, don't worry because you don't have to get dressed, but I'll be dressed because I do have to be at a training um, at nine. So uh, yeah, so seven o'clock, we're gonna talk about the gifts of wisdom that the Bible talks about. Um, when it lists the gifts, it says the gifts of healing, it says the gift of discernment, it says the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom. What are those? Okay, and if you know them, then what? You can use them and you can use them what to be effective promised life to get every promise that God has promised you. Now I am in agreement with the Holy Spirit and I'm in agreement in hoping that you would partner with me. Yes, Pacific Standard Time. So that would be seven, what, eight, nine, 10 Eastern, 10 a.m. Eastern. So you guys be up and already had your breakfast. Cool, it's not, yes, in Texas it's nine Central Standard Time, it's nine. So at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, because I'm in Cali, um, that's when we'll be doing, um, the, the training on wisdom and knowledge, getting that understanding of those gifts. Okay. And so, um, partner with me in agreement. Now that we've learned about agreement in prayer, I'm partnering with the Holy spirit. Now I'm partnering with you and I'm asking you to stand. We want a promised life chapter. We are believing God when we unlock, when we launch it, that we are going to get 15 States right off the bat. Okay. 15 states right off the back. And I know we have it here. We have ladies from Minnesota, Virginia, Texas, and it could be different cities within a state, but we are believing God to launch out the gate 15 Promise Life chapters, okay? That is what we're believing God for. So please believe God with me. We're or instruments. I'm in agreement with the Holy Spirit. This is what he's commanded me to do. It is a mandate on my life. I cannot sleep. Uh, <laughs> he won't let me sleep. So I know that this is the Lord. So if you can come together with me, if you say, Tamara, you know what? I don't want to start a chapter, but I'll donate. I'll give. That's going to help us build the, the platforms and things like that. And I need your prayer. So agree with me um, that Holy Spirit does that. And I am willing to be wowed. So if God wants to do bigger yes he can do bigger I'm, I'm all I'm here I'm here for it I'm here for the bigger and greater okay so I love it and so I thank you ladies for coming in agreement with me and I love you so much um yeah all right ladies thank you bye